hello welcome to another video of this sva design youtube channel and in this video uh i'm going to take you guys through like the aerodynamics and the cfd and the flow simulation in solidworks and everything that you should be doing to um yeah just to create flow simulations and what the part also needs to have in it in order to it uh, in order for it to be able to create these flow simulations so um, the first thing that I will do is basically show you guys what it would take for a part and then you will also need to take a couple of steps to kind of do it for um, uh, for assemblies and everything so so the first thing that you should do I'm now in assembly by the way so but the first thing you should do for a part or an assembly for flow simulation to work you should need to have it installed in your SOLIDWORKS so um, in my case it used to be like this is like uh, grayed out and you can really uh, get into it, but you have to uh, in your in installation process. You have to make sure that that is also in there. So then you can click on it, then a new tab will open underneath it. And because I already had a project opened, it will kind of appear again. But I'm going to take you guys through the process, so I'm gonna uh, delete it for now. So um, yeah, so then is when you can basically start with your flow simulation and everything. So the next thing that your part needs to have and not only just SOLIDWORKS but this can just be a surface modeling so it can just be um, just a surface without a thickness basically so you have to make sure that everything is like a solid piece and that everything is um, yeah like I said that, that, is, that it has a thickness and that it can be like qu quantified and that it's um, and all of those things so if it doesn't have that then it doesn't know if it should flow through it or if it's something that needs to go over it so it just can't calculate anything so that is another thing so if you're just designing parts and you're not worrying about um, like overall if you're not doing it for assembly or anything then these are basically all the things you should, wor should worry about and after you did that then I can now basically take you guys to what the purpose of this video is and what I'm trying to achieve by doing this so first of all I'm uh, um, just put this this is like a default unmodified body panel the way it would be on the car through the wind tunnel and um, then I'm gonna make two more versions of it with a couple of modifications in it and then I'm gonna uh, show you guys those results and comparing them and all of that so so for this first model I already know that above this fender right here there will be like a suction going on so a low air pressure zone and underneath it there will be very slow uh, and turbulent air pressure and everything occurring underneath this panel so there will be a high air pressure zone so this will be creating lift and also it will uh, you know of course create resistance so I'm gonna take you guys through the process of setting up the wind tunnel and setting up the ferrometers and everything that you would want to um, to know about the part and how to kind of measure things and everything so uh, yeah, that's what I'm going to now. So you can select wizard in the flow simulation tab and then a window like this will open. So you can give the project a name, you can do whatever you want to do. So um, yeah, I'm going to just skip that and don't really give it a name. So here you can find all the measurement points and all the, the units that you could select with them and all that. So for a velocity, I'm going to use kilometers an hour and that is just all I'm gonna do for now it's not like an internal part or, or like a, a air intake or exhaust or anything so um, it's like external so select external and for gases you can also select like water or do whatever you want to do but I'm gonna just select like air and select next this is really you don't really have to do anything and this is the important part you want that air in to go in that uh, X direction so that would be this one and I'm gonna consistently use let's say 250 kilometers an hour so finish and then we'll create this box this box is the complete domain of which it would uh, calculate all the flows and everything and so you can edit that by just dragging these arrows because this, the, the smaller you kind of make that sound the less it has to calculate so although there will be like a, a bunch of irrelevant pieces that you don't really need to, to calculate so we can basically trim that down and it will kind of um, make the time of calculation a little bit smaller and everything so um yeah this would just be work better and then you can also set up some goals so you can also set up a goal for like a surface or, or a specific point or whatever so for now I'm gonna just set up a global goal for the entire part and um, 
you can then check the forces so i want the force in the x direction that will be air resistance in newtons and i also want it in the z direction so that would be the vertical so if it's negative it's being pushed down and it's creating down force and if it is positive it's being sucked up and it's creating lift and this part will create lift on a car so just so you know um and then when we have our goals we have our parameters and everything then we can run the project and now uh, it will kind of take um i don't know maybe like two or three minutes and i'm just um and then it will show up with the results and then after that i will take it to the second part all right so now after this is finished then we, you can uh, after you start the uh, simulation everything it will kind of open a window like this and will kind of tell you how long it took to do it so in my case it took one minute and six seconds and that is not uh, too bad but if you were really doing it for the entire car like that you might be uh, I don't know like uh, 12 hours wouldn't be unrealistic so um, yeah for this next in this window list of goals so you can see like the force the global um, global goal force in the X direction so that it will be air resistance is 319.8 newtons so that would be um, similar to a force of something around like let's say 32 kilograms of it pulling it back at that speed so at um, in the set direction so in lift it's creating 16 something like 16 or 17 kilograms of lift vertically so it's being pulled up with that force and of course the car will be way too heavy to be pulled up by a force like that but it will decrease tire pressure at higher speed so um, you kind of want to is, is still make that as minimum as possible and still create as much downforce as possible even though it, it won't really cause the car to take off it's also not um, beneficial either so it's still um, uh, it's still restricting tr uh, grip on tire grip let's just put it in that way so the next thing that you could do is also look at the flow so you can kind of see where things might go wrong and where or where it's might um, creating some lift and everything so you can go to uh, I'm gonna do it again go to flow trajectories and select insert right click it and it will open up and um, then you can kind of select the surface where you want to see the air flowing over so in my case just basically almost everything actually and then you can uh, select how many lines you want to form I also put like uh, something around 100 the more you do though it it's gets um, it's get heavier on the part so you need to be a little bit careful with that and um yeah something like that and then i'm gonna just yeah let it go and we're gonna put the lines in there and all of that so uh, yeah and here we go so uh first of all this is you can already see a spiral or anything forming but this is on the, the on the bottom side of it so this is here this is not on the top of it so um two things that catch my eye off top is of course that spiral that is on the other side of it and also you can basically see like a, 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 a pretty you know a stagnant piece of air current and everything just underneath that panel and also air currents here that are traveling in the opposite direction of where you want it to be so that is the first thing the second thing that I want uh, to point out is that on top of this air panel you can also see some flow separation happening in this section only so here it's working out pretty good and everything is basically staying attached to that panel but on this corner section it's kind of uh, detaching itself already so um that is something that would be more it would be better if it would just stay attached but and just release at the end of it but you know this is uh something that also probably should will stay like that so um yeah so another thing that i noticed is that this panel is actually really working out for me and that is also really doing what i wanted it to do so i'm thinking about also putting some sort of a, a winglet in this section to kind of um instead of uh, turning that air down kind of um, uh, move it upward and also to create some type of a vortex uh, on that uh, on the side of that wheel to kind of uh, create a, some sort of an air blanket that would um, kind of put um, some sort of a, a air current between the turbulent air that's coming off the turning wheel 
and the smoother air that's running like down the side of it if that makes sense so the next thing you can do is also right click the flow trajectory and click on play so now you can kind of see the flows and you can kind of see in what direction everything is flowing and um one thing that is really evident for me is that you can if you focus on all of the flows that are basically underneath the panel so in this section right here you can also see that those are yellow and also underneath it you can really see that uh in sp especially from this angle you can really see that there is just a lot of um there's just a lot of turbulent air forming underneath that body panel and that will only be amplified when there is also a, a real wheel that's turning in this direction so that would only be increased and will only be amplified as i said so um that is something that we need to fix on the car so i already came up with a solution for that and for that i'm gonna um, take you to the part real quick the individual component so what you can do is also put a hole in there so like so and I already made that you can see that I just dragged that thing down so it's, I didn't really uh, I also made a video on how I created the front panel and I basically took the exact same approach with doing this one so you can check that video out if you're interested so um, now that there is this hole this hole will kind of equalize the pressure on top of the uh, fender and also on the bottom section of it so it will be very hard for these uh, currents to uh, maintain their high velocity and their, their low velocity and their high pressure when the pressure kind of gets equalized by this big gaping hole on top of the fender so uh, I guess they will kind of also speed up the flow underneath it and just re really equalize the pressure and also equalize the velocity on both sides so that is what I hope to see in um, the results so you know, now we can go back to the simulation and as soon as you change the part you will be uh, asked this question so the geometry of the or the model of the project project settings have been changed do you want to reset the competition on the main? No, you don't want it because um, the, 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 the overall dimensions and everything of the part didn't change. So I still want to keep this, um, the box that is on it right now. I do, um, so now it says the flow simulation has detected that the model was modified. Do you want to recess, uh, reset the mesh settings? Yes, I do. Because the flow will ever and everything will be different on it, so that is what you do want to change. But the competitional domain needs to stay the same. So, uh, after we did that, we can just make sure that you keep this window open so that you can also always check these results and compare them. So, uh, don't close that one, but we can now just run it again with the same, uh, same everything, but with uh, just th that hole in there, so it will kind of check everything again okay so now the results are in and I'm gonna just put them side to side real quick so this is the new version and this will be the old one so off the top you can see that the resistance of this new new version with um, with the goal in the top of the fender is creating a lot now nah, not a really a lot but it is uh, creating more air resistance but the drag went significantly down so um, yeah you can see that here it is at like uh, 16 kilograms and here's at just something like 10 so um, I'm, I'm really interested to see what kind of increase the drag on the part because that is something that I didn't really expect I thought it would actually be less but uh, yeah I'm gonna check that out in the results real quick but this uh, this this um, you know this change in the amount of lifting is creating I did expect that so um, yeah let's again look at the flow trajectory from the same with the same points and everything okay so um, I guess that is basically what happened so you can kind of see that there is still some sort of a vortex being created underneath that panel and I think that is just coming off um, the air current that is traveling underneath it and then kind of needs to stick to this trying to stick to the surface so it starts to speed up a little bit and then it try to uh in its efforts to stick to that surface it kind of gets turbulent and it just throws around a little bit so maybe it would also be helpful and beneficial to kind of add a panel to this section right here to try to keep that airflow smooth instead of trying to directly stick it towards the surface maybe that would be a good idea or we could change the lines even to let it go straight first and then gradually go up over that fender that m might also be a good idea I think that is the way to go and maybe that would also even still look good so 
I think I'm gonna do that um, in a second. But then I would also need to change a couple of things so that it might be messed up. I'm gonna check that out, and I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna do that in a later version. So um, okay. The next thing that I can see is that there is kind of air currents being rejected upward instead of it flowing straight off of this panel. So um, I think that that is maybe why the resistance is being caused because it's kind of I, I think I think that what it what it is. Let's just look at the play version and see how it really flows and everything. So okay. And I also didn't see this in the previous one. That that panel was kind of causing that air to uh, stick to it that much, and also do all of those things. So um, yeah, I'm actually wondering now what would happen if I would actually put the wheel in there. I think the results would be very different, actually. Maybe that is uh, for another video. But that I think this this section right here is also causing it to um, create a lot more air resistance, and I also think that this airflow because it has to deviate from its bed, it is also kind of going through those same things. And of course, this one is also creating uh, some sort of a suction there. So that is basically why I think the air resistance is happening. So um, yeah, but if you look at the way this flow is going. It is pretty much going straight with um, not too much trying to create vortexes and everything. So that is good for its air resistance. Though those um, yeah, those lines are pretty straight. They're not really creating vortexes, as I said. So it's pretty smooth off of it. And I'm also looking at this, by the way, because I am going to design a rear wing, and I want to know what the angle of the air is because the rear wing will be sitting here in this section. So I want to know what the approach angle of that air is once it will kind of be reunited with that rear wing and it will be all the air will be directed upward so it's basically now coming off onto it straight so I don't really have to make that rear wing dip first I can just basically make it straight up like that so uh, that is a good thing also okay so the next step that I'm gonna take um, for the third version is that I'm going to take another part and those are the fender fans on the rear and this is the next step as soon as you add a part to something uh, to assembly and everything then it kind of has to check the relationship between the two parts and that there aren't really any lines that are exactly lining up with each other because that would create zero thickness uh, geometries that the, uh, the computer just can't calculate because it doesn't know if, if uh, the air kind of needs to stop there or if it needs to flow through it it can't calculate the thickness right there so it doesn't know if it is a solid component or that it is the or that it has no thickness so um, for that it's doing these calculations and I hope everything will be fine and I already calculated it so it should be fine and um, yeah once you get it to uh, do that then you can kind of continue and the way to do that is by adding a bunch of fillets and everything and just making sure that even though the parts you kind of used to um, so it just um, confirmed everything's correct so even though these two parts if you would uh, if you look at it they fit perfectly together in, in these holes and everything but you can see that these lines they don't really line up that there's kind of uh, gaps between everything and that I put a fillet on everything just to make sure that there are no lines that are perfectly match with each other even though this part is specifically designed to fit on this fender if that makes any sense whatsoever so now that everything is correct we can again run this um, setup and um, yeah then we will kind of see the results my prediction is that this would create more air resistance because these slots kind of would do that to um, the air current would kind of slow it down a little bit and take some energy out of it and there is potential for this creating more downforce, but I'm not sure. It could also um, like counter uh, affect some of the effects and everything. So I don't really know what is going to happen, but uh, we'll see in a couple of minutes. Okay, so now I put all of the um, results next to each other. So this is the first version, second version, and the third version. So on the first and second, I already kind of did a comparison, and you can see 
mostly that here the um the lift really drops down and the uh, resistance really increases here the resistance increases even more and the lift also drops down but not as significantly as it did in the second version so um yeah this is the highest this is yeah um almost another 10 kilos of lift of uh, drag on this version on um, if you compare it to the first version so um if you're doing like a streamlined version of the car then this would be the way to go and we will also kind of make uh, have people have the option of um kind of which fender bent version they want to have so i kind of wanted to um that you can order like two versions of it one that's just fully enclosed and just uh, kind of mimics the the regular pattern that is already on the fender so that is it doesn't really change size or change form uh with the fender you can kind of just see a little bit of a cutout and then the aerodynamics will be similar to this one and then you also need to um have to have a track version that you have kind of the lowest amount of lift that is on that fender and then also one that um if you're going if you, let's say you're going to a Lamar racing type of venue or whatever and you don't want a lot of air resistance but you still want minimum amount of lift then you kind of uh, just uh, drill that thing out and um, just take this the screws out of it and just go racing like that if you're for endurance racing or a track where you don't really need a lot of downforce or anything so that is uh, the three options that you would have on this fender so we can now go back and look at the results of that thing and that is not in this one but in this one so again uh check out the flow trajectory but edit the definition a little bit and also let's uh select these panels of course all right so you can really see that uh that air is being kicked up through the fender and that is probably also kick, uh, causing a lot of air resistance so that is something that is happening uh, and if you ask me that looks pretty cool and also let's say it is raining or anything or you're on, on a wet track and you can kind of see that shape of uh, also like the rain coming out of the fender or when you're drifting and smoking you can also see that so I do think that is very cool and it looks very cool and a lot of things that I do on this car just based on the experience that you not only have yourself but also just the entertainment value that the car delivers to a crowd of people that are watching so and that is kind of what uh, the goals for the car that is also why I added like some uh, video game elements and everything to it okay but the big thing that you can see is that we're still creating this underneath the panel so um, I am thinking about kind of modifying this panel and if I kind of show you guys what I have in mind and that is just to kind of take this shape and to take these lines and let's find a better angle for that and maybe I should, yeah if I would modify these lines, I would kind of mess up this uh, the original shape for the fender fence. I would also need to change the other uh, original fender fence that's already on the car to um, work with this body, with the new body shape. But what I have in mind of doing to kind of get rid of that uh, vortex that's creating underneath that body panel is to kind of um, make them horizontal in this section. To allow that air current that is that is trying to stick to the underside to really gradually be tilted up and everything and then um, yeah you know what let's just try it right now let's just see what happens all right so after doing a lot of um, I don't know like playing around with these fenders and everything I uh, kind of came up with a new solution that uh, I showed to you guys that I kind of uh, made this line go gradually up instead of directly up so it's go now a little bit more uh, horizontal um before it starts to go up and i think that will kind of reduce the internal pressure that you would find here and maybe even create a little bit of more downforce underneath that panel because it will allow the float to kind of stick to that panel and also on top of it it might create a little bit of a more of a high air pressure zone in this area before it goes over those fenders so i think it might be beneficial the way that i did this i do think it looks a little bit um worse than before but um i still feel like it works and i think it would also result in better aerodynamics so um yeah i'm gonna just run the results right now and uh, run the test right now and i will be back with you in a couple of seconds all right so now we can all right so now we can see all of the results compared them to each other this is the latest iteration 
I believe this is the first one, second one, third one, and then this is the last one, as I said. So, um, in the last one, you can see that definitely the drag um, from this one reduced with the fender fence and everything. So, that definitely did, I did uh, it definitely did something, and it's even down to this level in the, the drag and everything, but it's creating more lift than before. So, um, yeah, I have to look at what kind of did that. So maybe it um I don't I don't know. We have to see it with the flow and everything. So we'll check that out. Okay, so um now that we have the results in I'm trying to find the spot where um the actual lift is being created. This is actually a suction so that even though it is creating turbulence, it is actually creating downforce as well. So um I think it might be this section right here because that panel is directed upward. I I, don't, I think so, but that is, I can't really confirm that or anything. So um, uh, what I can do also is let this thing play and let's see. Those those fins really do work though, with um, them just kicking up that air and all of that. So um, that is very cool to see. But I think I think a lot of these problems will be resolved because first of all, I will add a, a big ass tire that will sit in that section that is uh, 315 millimeters wide, and also there will be another panel that goes from a line that is in here somewhere downward, with a diffuser in between. So that is um something that's also coming up. So that is not nothing that I am too worried about. But I just I just wanted to take you guys through the process of how it might um how to get certain results with the CFD and everything so is this on the outside of the panel by the way no it's on the inside so maybe that is also something but I just wanted to take you guys on a, a, through the process of what it takes to kind of run um, a successful computer uh, fluid dynamics so that's what CFD stands for um, in SOLIDWORKS with the flow simulations and everything and how you can also use that to optimize your designs and to kind of work with everything and to, to just basically get the results that you need and get the results that you want and all of that stuff so um yeah i'm gonna keep it at that for this long ass video thanks for watching please also leave a like or subscribe to this youtube channel it really help me out and um yeah i hope to see you guys in another video thanks for watching as i said i'm shaquille feldbaum sva design and i'm out